may be seated. Again, I want to welcome you. If you're new here, thank you for joining our family today. This is the first Sunday celebration of 2023. I don't know, like, the 2020s are just flying. 2020, 2021, 2022. I can't believe we're in 2023, but this is the first one, and I'm so excited to stand here. I'm excited because we are starting a new series uh, called Gaining Ground. And as we've been praying over the year, as we've been discussing pastoral team, myself coming and, and, and praying to God about where are we going as a church? What is the direction for us as a church? My heart and my, and my spirit and, and along with Pastor Jerry, Pastor Evely, we, we have this great sense in us that this is the year that we're going to advance in Jesus' name. That we would move forward. That we would gain ground. And that's why we, we titled it this uh, for the series that we're going to gain ground this year. As you may know, the 2020s, 21, 22, all the 20s have been quite difficult. We know that there has been so many trials um, spending time with people. We know socially, economically, relationally, there's like all these troubles that we face. Pick your year. There's probably a year out of the 20s where you're like, wow, that was probably the hardest year of my life. There's all these things that have been coming at us. And the reality is it's placed a lot of spiritual pressure on us. Like we've had to navigate, where is my faith as all of this is just coming and flooding on me? What is happening? And we're trying to navigate our dependent on, on where God is, who we are. And, and if you're like me, if you're being honest, you're kind of just, you know, day by day, trying to keep, hold on, hold on to the faith. There's just so much coming at us. And that's what, you know, I felt, and I, I know working with people, a lot of people felt through the 2020s. But let me tell you, friend, I believe that this is the year that we as a church family, that we'll go from the defensive to the offensive. That I declare over you that we will change and shift our position from just, you know, kind of reacting, going to and fro in our faith, but being able to stand firm to go forward, to, to move in the right direction. And maybe it's not a huge step that you take, but you're taking a step. It's not about how fast you get there. It's about going the right way, being on the narrow path. And that's what I want to declare over us today, that we would continue to stand firm, that this would be the year that we would take ownership of our spiritual life, that we would be the light of the world that we would place a priority on our walk with God, that we wouldn't be shaken, but our hope, our confidence in Christ wouldn't be, would be unshakable. We believe, and I believe that, and I sense it in my spirit, that, you know, this is the year that we'd be spiritually rich, that everything that comes our way, we would be, come from a place of wholeness. You know, it wouldn't be like we're reacting kind of, Questioning ourselves, doubting, but, but we would be firm. So what we did as a team, as a pastoral team, we got together and we like looked at uh, kind of this, this year coming up. Because we know, you know, how you start matters, right? How you start anything, it matters. You know, so we wanted to start this year off right. And we laid out a two-month series. We're going to be talking about gaining ground and how we can be equipped to gain ground this year for the first two months of the year. The passage that we're going to sit in, that we're going to study, that we're going to meditate on is in Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. And you might have read it if you've been in church for a while. It talks about the spiritual armor of God. What you have to know about the book of Ephesians is that Apostle Paul, he writes it, and he writes it as a letter to the church in Ephesus. And some people believe that it's not just for the church of Ephesus, but the letter was brought to all the different churches to encourage them in their faith. And what I love about this letter, if you read it, it's six chapters. We're going to spend two months in this passage. I hope in the two months you find time to read all of Ephesians. But in Ephesians, what's happening is Paul, he starts to teach about God he starts to teach you about others, and then he starts to give us practical tools, practical ways that we can conduct our life pleasing to God, that we can live in a life that's pleasing to God. And the way that he ends his letter, I find so encouraging, 
because he ends his letter in, in Ephesians 6 and he starts to talk about our opposition. He starts to talk about things that are against us. And not only things that are against us, but all that we have in order to overcome those things. That we are equipped through Jesus. That we can withstand. That we can stand firm. Because the reality is there is opposition. And we face it all the time. And it's encouraging because it could talk to us, be even encouraging today, that why we feel opposition in our faith. Why sometimes we feel like we're being brought back and forth, wavering, going to church, but still not really there. And he talks about this opposition and, and all that we have so that we can gain ground and stand firm. So I want us to, as we open up the series, I want us to watch a video where we can, you know, hear about the passage. Anybody here wear armor every day? Nobody, right? Nobody wears armor. So if you're here, you're probably like, well, nobody wears armor. Well, in that day, they wore armor. That's why Paul uses that analogy, because it's easy for them to relate to that topic. But to, for us here, it's hard for us to understand that. It's hard for us to see what that armor is. So when we're going through the passages, it might be like, okay, there's a blessed, breastplate of righteousness, all these kinds of things. But what does that look like? So I want us to kind of see this video representation so that we can be placed in that time. So you can see for yourself kind of the impact of his words when, when he's talking about the armor of God. So if you're at home today, I'm sorry, but it's only two minutes, so you can't make popcorn. And here today, I'm sorry, but you can't probably go to the bathroom. You'll probably miss it. So let's play the video, and let's watch our key text for this series. Finally, my brethren... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Pumped up? I'm pumped up. I'm ready to fight. <laughs> yeah, you can clap for the video, sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's the depiction of what Paul is. That's our key text. That's what we're studying. And I want to encourage you, you know, like we don't have armor around today, but I wanted you to see that so that you could see spiritually, that's what you have on. That's what you're equipped with to fight every battle, and, and, and God has made that available to all of us today. And that's what Paul is encouraging the, the church. You see, that's, that's what we're going to talk about for the next two months. So I want to encourage you, make it a priority to come and, and to learn about all of the passages, all that we have available to us. We have the, the series schedule that we'll put up. We have a first part in January, and then the second part is in uh, February. But, you know, make it a priority. You know, your spiritual life, that's what we need to do. So I want you to make a declaration, both in the chat and here today. I want you to turn to your neighbor, to say it to anybody, but say, in 2023, I am gaining ground. 
Yeah, I'm getting ground too. <laughs> Me too, I guess. But any, I want you to be sure. Because let me tell you, friends, you don't, you, you don't go where your faith, you don't have faith. Like you, you need to have the faith today to say that you're going to gain ground this year. And the title of the sermon, that, the, the first part of the series, is called The Battle Worth Fighting. And we're going to be looking at the first part, verses 10 to 13. Paul opens up the text and, and he opens up what we're studying today by telling us, informing us that every believer faces a battle. That there is a battle going on all around us. A battle that is not going on in the physical, but in the spiritual. You see, it's a battle that you cannot touch and, and see, but it's a battle that is happening and is affecting us. A battle that, 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 that is against us and, and, and tells us that we have an opposition that is fighting in the spiritual realm to take us away from the will of God. Ephesians 6, 10 to 13, let's read it. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. What is Paul talking about? Well, I want to tell you today that there is a battle. And I want to tell you today that this battle is worth fighting. The battle is real and it's worth fighting. And if you can't see it, even though you can't see it, I want to tell you today you need to fight it. You see, I feel like so many times we miss this battle in our personal lives. Why? Because we can't see it. Whether we like it or not, whether you're this person or not, either consciously or subconsciously, every year we decide what battles we're going to face. You know, you today, maybe you did your, you, you looked at your past year and you're like, you know, this year I'm going to fight the financial battle. I'm going to make sure that I save. I'm going to work extra hours. I'm going to get out of debt. Maybe you're going to fight the health battle. You say, this year I'm eating clean. No more rice for me. Oh, wow. The, the, the health battle, right? Or the relational battle, your relational battle where you're like, I'm going to make time for others. I'm going to make sure that I, I'm not too busy working. I'm going to be more present. That could be the battle that you've also decided. You see, every single year, we decide what battle we're going to face in life. Then what do we do? We reach in our toolbox and we say, okay, this is the plan for me to get there. I want to tell you today, don't miss the spiritual battle. Starting out this year, to be very clear with you, do not miss the spiritual battle. It is one of the most important, if not the most important battle that needs your attention and needs your focus. Why? Because let me tell you. See, the spiritual battle, it deals with the inside. It deals with your spirit and your soul. It deals with the place where love and joy and peace come from. It deals with your connection with God. I'll tell you, if you lose this battle, even though you win everything else, it will still feel like you lost. You see, there are so many times I see in people's life where they have won every battle. They have conquered their goals, and yet they're losing the spiritual battle. And they're wondering what's happening. See, I've checked off everything. I've done everything that I've set out to do, but I still don't feel right. I want to tell you, prioritize and fight the spiritual battle. And some of you today might be losing that battle simply because, one, you didn't know it existed. So maybe you just didn't know. Number two, maybe you haven't been actively fighting it. Maybe, you know, you, you, you just haven't decided that, you know, I'm going to put this as a priority. And, and some of you here have seen the impact of not fighting it in your life. 
Some of you here may have felt the, the impact of just wavering in your faith. When you come to church, you're out, you leave the same. You come to church, you leave the same. And it's just this wavering. It's like, I can't really get ahead of what's happening. Maybe it's because we haven't put a priority on fighting this battle. I want to encourage you today that this battle needs to be fought. And Satan, what he wants you to do, he wants to do, he wants to convince you there's no battle. Why? So you don't fight it. He wants to convince you. There's nothing to be fought. You're okay. But, but let me tell you, it will impact you if you do not fight it. But where we need to start, the beginning of this series and everything that we're doing, the bottom line is we need to know the battle is real and it's worth fighting. To gain ground this year, you have to have the desire. You have to make that decision that says, I am going to fight. I am going to place a priority on this battle. I'm going to put my attention on I'm going to put uh, everything that I have into winning this battle. But what do we need to do first? Well, we got to know about it. What is the spiritual battle? What is it that we face? You see, if you don't know about it, you can't overcome it. If, if you don't name it, you can't overcome it. So we have to understand what the, what the word says about this battle. What is it that we face? So in my time, I want to just share quick three truths about the battle. And I want us to grip this and grasp this because this will help us make that decision on will I want to fight. The first truth is that the devil is our enemy. The first truth we need to understand is that your opposition... The person, the, the, the thing that is out oppressing you, that is against you, is the devil. Ephesians 6, 11, this is our text. It says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Paul says it clearly. The enemy is not flesh and blood, but against the dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil. We need to understand today the real enemy. The real enemy in this life is the devil, is the demons, is the evil spirits, is the, peop the, the, the forces of the dark world. What does that mean? Well, your enemy is not your boss who is nagging you every single week. Your enemy is not your coworker who gossips about you. Your enemy is not your neighbor who is inconveniencing you, complaining about you all the time. Your enemy is not your spouse who nags you. That is not your enemy. Because the enemy is not flesh and blood. Why is this important to understand? Because there, there are so many times we put all of our energy and effort fighting the wrong thing. You see, that's what Satan does. He kind of, he, he, he makes us go against one another. He divides us. You see, but God in his word, he will never tell you to harm somebody. He says, love those who are against you. Love others. But that's what the enemy does. And let me tell you, the people that are causing trouble in your life, because they are those people. And unfortunately, they will come with you into 2023. That's just the reality. Like, I realize that. There are people who do inconvenience your life. There are people who say bad things about you or maybe not spread things about you. But let me tell you, they may inconvenience you for a short time, but the devil, he's out to destroy you. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be alert and sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I, who is Jesus, have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You see, the devil, his mission is destruction. He wants to destroy you. 
by destroying your relationship with God, to, to put, make sin into your life and entangle you so that you'd feel broken and, and you'd, feel, you'd feel gripped by him. He wants to divide you from God. The passage in, in our passage 6.11, Ephesians 6.11, it says the devil's schemes. You see, the devil is planning against you. He is orchestrating, working. He prowls around like a roaring lion waiting for someone to devour. His mission is destruction. Let me tell you his method. It's deception. You see, the devil is the master of deception. And he twists the truth. He tries to fool us. He tries to get us to live a lie. He, gets a, he, he, he tries to make us believe in a lie, and we live it out, and what happens? It ends up destroying us. It ends up working inside of us and destroying within. Recall the Genesis account. If you don't read the Bible, I'll tell you about it. Well, in the beginning, when we first see the devil, Satan, as a serpent, in Genesis 3, what happens? Anybody know what happens in the garden? <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is not Bible quiz. So what happens is, is that Adam and Eve are in the garden. And God says to them, do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat it, you will certainly die. And then the devil comes along. What does the devil say? The devil says, you won't certainly die. And he starts to twist the truth. And he starts to tell them what they want to hear. Speaking to the desires inside of them. What happens is Genesis 3, 6, when the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some of it and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. See, that's what Satan does. He twists the truth. He tries to get you to buy into a lie. He speaks to your desires. So that you, try, you, you feel like this is the, the thing that you should do. He doesn't tell you what's right. He tells you what you want to hear so that you walk out a lie in your life. That you're stuck in sin. Stuck in a cycle. Stuck wondering how I can get out of where I'm at. Genesis 3.13. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate it. See, the method of Satan is deception. He knows the truth, but he tries to twist it. Recall Jesus in the wilderness. Jesus is fasting, and the devil meets him, and he uses the word of God against him. He tries to confuse, the de- confuse Jesus, trying to get him to walk out a way where he would fall. See, that's what Satan does. He sells you on a lie, and then you live it out. The best way I can illustrate this is who here in 2023 is on a diet? like, I'm not on a diet. Uh." Anybody here on a diet? Okay, nobody wants to say they're on a diet. That's why. You know, when December started... I remember I was preaching, and I said, I love December because the diets are off. Well, I don't like January because the diets are on, right? <laughs> the diets are very much on. But let me tell you just how to, how to illustrate this. You know, when you're doing a diet, one of the, the places to be deceived is in the area of nutrition. Is anybody here a fitness trainer, nutritionist? Anybody here? Oh, let's see. Nutrition. You can, like, I don't know. Should I eat the egg? Should I not eat the almonds? Should I? What should I do? Like, and there's so many versions. There's so many things out there that I'll tell you. <laughs> Based on your desires, you can find anything that would suit what you want to do. And it would tell you you'd lose weight. So, for example, I could find uh, something where I could, you know, you can eat ice cream all the time. Well, actually, from, if you eat ice cream from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., You will lose weight every day. There's like stuff like that out there. Not saying that's out there. But what we would do, I would believe it and say, because it speaks to my desire, I'd be like, okay. 
this is the, finally I found the diet that suits my body type, right? So, so I would go out and I would eat ice cream for, for all that time. And then I'd realize, oh my gosh, I am bigger than I've ever been. <laughs> like, see, that's what, that, but what, let, let, let me recap here. You see, the person who designed the diet, all they did was sell you on it. But then you decided to live it out. See, that's what Satan does. He tells you a lie makes you believe it's true, and then you live it out. You, decide, you make the actions, and it, it starts to destroy you. But let me tell you, Satan, it, it's a little bit, he goes a little further. Because let me tell you, once you open your life to Satan, he comes in. And now there's spiritual oppression. And now there's more than just, oh, I'm just doing these actions. There's actually something that comes into your life that starts to hinder you and harm you. And if you don't know the word of God, my friends, it will be easy for you to be deceived. If you do not know the scriptures, if you do not know his word, he will deceive you. You see, the devil is a liar. And he manipulates us to follow him instead of following Jesus. So I want to ask you today, very straight, we're at the beginning of the year, who do you follow? What truth is guiding your life? Is that truth the word of God? Is it aligned to the word of God? Because if it's not, I'm sorry to be frank with you, but it is the lie of the devil. Who do you follow? You see, Jesus, he was rebuking these people who were saying, I follow you, I follow you, but they weren't listening to what he was saying. It says that in John 8, look what it says. This is what Jesus says to them. He says, you belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning. Not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Friends, we got to know this about our enemy. That he will do everything to deceive us. He is a liar, and he will try to get us to doubt the word of God. We have to be on guard. He can really deceive us. Second Corinthians 11, it says, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. He'll do anything to take the word away from you. Luke 8, you remember the parable of the sower? When Jesus is teaching, what happens? There's, there's one version where, where Jesus says, Satan comes in and snatches the word, even before it gets to the heart of the listener. You see, this devil will do everything in his power to make us not know the truth so that he can deceive us. And as a pastor, I'll tell you, my heart, it breaks. When I get more information that we are becoming more biblically illiterate as time goes on. You see, my heart, it breaks. As I find out that the next generation probably doesn't have a relationship with the Bible. You see, my heart breaks. Why? Because they will be easily deceived. You see, and, and, and I, like, I want to speak to the next generation for a moment. Like TikTok sermons and inspirational quotes from from the celebrity preachers, like they're good, but they're not the full word of God. You're not meant to snack, you're meant to feast. Like you have to be aligned to the truth or you will be deceived. Like let's not be naive. We will as a generation be deceived. See, Satan is doing everything and anything in his power that we do not know the truth. He's trying to get us to live a certain way. He's trying, he's prowling around. Let me tell you, Ephesians 4 says what? All it takes is a simple opportunity. All it takes is a foothold for him to enter in. But let me tell you, friends, once he's in, he's in. Seeing a little thing, the little lie, the little bit of gossip, the little bit of dirty joke, the little bit of compromise at work, the little bit of this, the little bit of that, he comes in. 
He works his way around your life. He starts to kill the things in your life that are of God. He kills your marriage. He kills your self-worth, ultimately resulting in him killing your relationship with God. See, he's real, and he does destroy, and I've seen it. I've seen people who are gripped by him. You see, I've seen people who, who are living in shame and condemnation. You see, the devil wants you to believe he's not real. You see, the devil wants you to believe that him and the demons and the spiritual realm, all that Pastor Paul is talking about today, it's not real. So you can just dismiss it. But let me tell you, flat out, the devil's real. Demons are real. Evil spirits are real. How do I know that? Read the Bible. Like people are demonically oppressed. Like his, one of Jesus' main ministries is, is uh, delivering people from demons. Demons are still here to this day. So I want us to open our eyes to see that. Because I want to tell you, don't play with the devil. Don't try to see how far you can go. Because he will deceive you. He will come in. Why am I telling you all this? Not to make you fearful, but to open your eyes to a battle that you may not have been fighting. To open your eyes to an enemy who may not have your attention. But I pray that now you see it. Because as a church, in order for, for us to gain ground and move forward, we have to take our place in the spiritual realm. And we got to say, devil, no more. We got to take our place as a church. We got to stand up and say, Devil, no more. No more deception. No more lies. We are equipped with the Word of God, not over my family, not over my health, not over anything in my life. Devil, no more. So I want to encourage you. I want you to declare that today and say it Devil, no more. Not today, Satan. Not today. Not today. You see, that's what we got to do. We have to take our place. We have to know our enemy. Know what what he uses so that we can be equipped in every way. That's the first truth. But the second truth is this, and this is where I really want to encourage you. The second truth of the spiritual battle... Is it, it, and what I want to encourage you is that the, the side that we're standing on, it's the winning side. And that the Lord is strong, the Lord is mighty. We have to know this truth. We got to remember, you see that, that battle that we're facing, that, that the devil in his schemes, they're all predictable. And the devil is powerless. He is under Jesus' authority. You see, the battle is not evenly weighted here. It's not like we have two ultimate powers, you know, uh, fighting against one another. No, 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 my friend. The devil is under Jesus' authority. (sighs) Let me read to you this. uh, Well, let me read to you this passage. It reminds us that, you know, we are under the authority. He is under the authority of Jesus. Acts 10.38 says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. See, Satan is under Jesus. The demons tremble at the name of Jesus. He would deliver people just at one word. Anybody here have a small dog? Small dog, anybody here? Yes, okay, great, small dog, okay, great, wow, wow, thank God, small dog owners. Uh, Yeah, but what do we know about small dogs? My sister has small dogs, I love them, I don't want one, but I love them. Um, (laughs) My sister has a small dog, and what I've noticed, and I'm not talking about your small dog, so I'm not trying to target them or anything, just so you're not, you know, but what I've noticed is that when a big dog comes around a small dog, that dog yaps. Like he's like yapping and he's barking and barking and barking and barking and barking. And, he, and from the outside, you're kind of like, like you have no chance against that big dog. 
Like what? And what do we say about these little dogs? That they're all bark but no bite. Right? I want to tell you, Satan, he's all bark but no bite. Because he's under the authority of Jesus. You see, he can, he can yap, yap, yap. He can say all these things. But the bottom line is God is over him. That God has dominion. That the Lord is strong and mighty. And through the power of the cross, Satan's power was defeated. Hebrews 2 says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he who is Jesus, too shared in their humanity, so that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death. That is the devil. And free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. You see, Jesus came and he fulfilled the promise in Genesis 3 to strike the heel, to crush the head of the serpent, which is the devil that brought death to us. Jesus fulfilled that. It is done. So I want to encourage you today. Have hope in this battle. Why? Because you might have lost a couple battles in your life. Maybe you're here being like, well, I fell into this. I fell. You may have lost some of them, but let me tell you that Jesus has won the war. And the victory is his. We know the final fate of the devil. We know that he is under the feet. He, we know that he will be condemned to the eternal fire. That there will be one day that we will no longer face spiritual oppression. That we will no longer be tempted. But that the devil will receive what is due to him. You see, Jesus has the victory. Revelation 20.10, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet have been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. See, the battle is the Lord's. Jesus has the victory. You are not hopeless, my friends, because you are on the side of, of the one where no one can stand against. You are with the one who is mighty. You are with the one who is strong. And I want to remind you that even though we face this struggle, the Lord does not face this struggle. Like Just because we're going through it, we're having a hard time, God is not having a hard time with this. He knows his authority. He knows his power. So remind yourself, recall John 16, 33, that we would have peace. That though we face momentary troubles in this life, take heart because we have the one who has overcome the world. Jesus. We have him. So I want you to declare today, I'm on the winning side. See, with God on your side, what can stand against you? I really believe that with God on your side, what could stand against you? That's the last truth of this battle. See, we are fully equipped to win every battle in Jesus' name. Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. I want to encourage you today to have strength in the Lord. He's on your side. Be strong in him. You know, strong in him. The, the Greek part is in dynamo, which means to impart ability, to empower. Have confidence today. You know, that, that you ha have hope that, you know, God will empower you. Jesus will empower you. He will give you the strength that you need. So be strong in the Lord. This year, 2023, be strong in him and not in yourself. You see, that's the battle that we face internally. And to be honest, over the past couple of years, it's been my testimony as well. Like me and my family, you know, there's so many things that come your way. And it's like you're trying your best, and you, you kind of rely on your gifts, your talents, what you know, your physical strength. But then you find out it's not enough. That you're, at, you're at the end. You're at the end of it all, and, and, and there's still more things coming. That was our, a, a personal walk that we've had for numerous times in the past couple of years. It's like at the end of our strength, we still have hope. Because we'd find when we would turn ourselves to the Lord, when we would pray to him, when we would declare his promises over life, we'd be founded in him. 
I'll tell you, strength would rise. And it's a strength that helped us continue on through the seasons of life. As his spirit empowered us. That's what this verse is talking about. Be strong in the Lord. Let the spirit of God empower you. As we go into 2023, let the spirit of God empower you. Because my friends, it is not by your power. It is not by your might. It is not by your strength. But it's by his spirit that we are overcomers. That's just the truth that we have. And Paul, Apostle Paul, he famously writes in Philippians. As he's going through recounting his life and all that he's going through, he recounts it, and you know it, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. That's the hope that we have, that the Lord will strengthen us. The Lord will impart his ability. He will give us the authority that we need to fight the battle. We have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Ephesians 1, 18 to 23. Listen to this. It says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. God bless his word. Look what it says there. His incomparably great power for us. Somebody say that, for me. It's for us who believe. That same power that raised Christ is in you. Ephesians 2 says we are seated with Christ in the heavenlies. The devil will try to trick you, tell you you're powerless, that you have no authority. I want to remind you that you have authority in Jesus' name. The enemy bows down to the name of Jesus. When the 72 disciples, they were given the authority by Jesus, they were overjoyed when they were casting out demons. They, they used the name of Jesus. They were casting out demons. They were so excited. They came to Jesus, and Jesus said this to them. He said, Luke 10, 18 to 23, he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. He says, we have the authority, but I love what it says here. I want you to catch this. He says, don't rejoice because you have authority. He says, rejoice because nothing can come in your way. Your names are written in heaven. You see, nothing could stand against it. That's what we rejoice in, that we have everything we need. We are equipped to win every battle. So, friends, stand firm. This year, come here, take your place. Decide to fight the battle because in Jesus' name, you will win. In Jesus' name, you will overcome. You know, we just need to decide to fight it. Decide to make it a priority. James 4, 7 puts it so simply. He says, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. See, submit, put your strength in. Be humble before him. Resist, take your stand. You know, you are the Lord's. Take your stand this year and the devil will flee from you. As I close today, I'm going to call up the worship team. And I just want to ask you a simple question. You know, as we reflect on the battle and everything, I want to just ask you, that: will you decide to fight this year? You see, will you decide to fight the battle? I pray that as we have talked about it, looked at the Bible, that your eyes are open to see that this battle is worth fighting, that this battle is real, and that if 
we put our trust in Jesus, that if we put our hope in him, that we can overcome this year. You see, I, I want this year to be different. That might be you here today. I want this year to be different. So don't start it the same. Focus on your spiritual life. Focus on the battle. Put a priority on fighting and overcoming with Jesus. The bottom line is the battle is real and is worth fighting. The last part of our passage, Ephesians 6.13, it says, Therefore put on the full armor of God. Knowing all that we talked about, the battle and everything, it says then put on the spiritual, the armor of God. And that's what we're going to be talking about for the next two months. So I want to encourage you, you know, learn about, we just learned about what it is. But how do we fight it? Well, that's for the next two months. So I want to encourage you to come and learn. But then it says this, it says, so that when the day of evil comes, not if the day of evil comes, but when it comes. And look at this. Look at this illustration that he used. Look at this picture. I want this picture to be in your mind at the beginning of this year. This is the picture that I see our church and, and, and all of us together. Look, at, look what it says. It says, so you may be able to stand your ground and after everything you have done to sin. See, that's the picture that I want to see you, you to see yourself this year. That you see, we're able to stand firm gain ground even after everything happens in our life after everything is done to us we are still standing see that's gaining ground that's standing firm and that's what I believe for all of you here today so I want to ask you to stand it's the beginning of the year so we're going to take time we're going to respond to God and today, I want to open the altar to you. I want to ask you the question, will you decide to fight this year? I want you to ask the question, will you put a priority on your spiritual life? And today, you might be here saying, yep, that's me. God, that's me. I'm making a decision. I'm going to do it this year. I'm going to put on the armor. I'm going to commit to making this a priority. I want to fight the fight this year. I want to open up the altar so that you can respond. And I want the devil to see you come forward. I want him to see you take a step of faith out of your seat and come to the front. Why? Not so we can just, you know, see everyone at the front. But I want it also in your, in your heart that you would say, and maybe you, you're not the person who comes to the front, but I'm going to tell you this year, let's do it different. That we would take that step of faith and say, God, I know you see me. I don't care who else sees me, but I know you see me come to this altar. And, and God here, I want to declare that I'm making a decision to fight. So as we sing this song, you come to the front and have a time with God. We're going to just corporately pray together, but I encourage you, decide, fight. This year, gain ground. Let's sing.
And, and just declare that this is yours, God. This battle is yours. So if you're here today, even if you're in the congregation, wherever you are, you're this year, God. You see, it's not me who's looking, but God sees you. He knows you. He knows what you've been fighting. He knows what you've been facing. Today, God, we declare with every hand held up, we surrender to you. That God, it is through you that we overcome. God, today we decide to be on the winning side. Today, God, we decide to give it all to you. So God, help us. Help us to put a priority on your word. Help us, oh God, to be spiritually rich in you. Help us to put our strength not in ourselves, but in you. Help us to know you more. Help us to seek you. Help us, oh God, Lord, to not get distracted or deceived, but that God, that we'd be found in you. Because God, we know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And today we declare to the devil that you are under our feet, that no more, not in our families, not in our life, not in our career, that not in the generations to come, we say to you, Satan, no more in Jesus' name. That you have no hold over our life. That you set us free, Jesus. Set us free. Set us free. Set us free, God. God. The battle belongs to you. You have all the victory. And today, today, God, we stand with you. So, God, I pray for everybody here that you protect them. I pray, God, Lord Jesus, you surround them. I pray, God, that you guard them. I pray, God, Lord Jesus, that you will continue to equip them with everything they need. For God, Lord Jesus, your promise is sure, your word is sure over our lives. So, God, we just declare it and we say, have the rest of the year, have our lives, have, have every situation. We just give it all to you, and we're just so thankful. We're just so grateful that, God, we have you, and you are enough for all things. We bless you. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody says amen. amen. Why don't you give God thanksgiving? And you could be seated. Back to your seats. You know, I believe that what we did was, you know, spiritually in the spiritual realm, right? It's in the spiritual realm that we're battling. So sometimes, you know, you have to overcome the physical to do it. And I'm so proud, and, and, and I know that God is going to continue to do things. I want to announce to you that a part of this Gaining Ground series that we are declaring a 21-day fast. So fasting and prayer, 21 days, starting January 16th. So you have a week and a bit to eat your hearts out. No, I'm sure, kidding. But you have January 16th. This is not a diet, okay? This is not a diet plan for you to get slim again, okay? So that's not it. But what do we know? We know that we're battling the spiritual. So we got to be spiritually strong. So if we're going to start the year off right, we have to tune ourselves to the spiritual. 
So uh, I just wanted to announce that today so that you can be prepared as we get up to it. But even in your life groups, talk about what is it that you're going to hold accountable to? What is it that you're going to deny yourself, not for the sake of denying yourself, but to, make, to, for, to deny yourself, but then turn towards the Lord? What is it that you're going to remove, and then what is it you're going to fill? See, that's what we need to do is fill it with spiritual things. So it's a 21-day fasting and prayer, and I believe that God is going to move. He's going to speak to us, that people will receive breakthrough during this time. So I'm going to invite you to be a part of it. You know, and if this is your first fast, we'll walk you through it. We'll guide you through it and make sure that you're not intimidated or anything like that. But we believe that fasting is still a principle that we need to practice to this day as believers. It's one of the tools that God has given us so that we can be in tune with him is spiritually strong. So uh, I also want to encourage you, you know, next week we're talking about truth. We're talking about, you know, compromise and all that stuff. So continue to learn more. We're going to sit for two months. So be here. Invite a friend. Get them. If you're like, hey, you need this, like you need to gain ground this year, invite them to the house of God and let God be the one to speak to them. So let's stand as we dismiss today. Let's raise our hands to the heavens as we receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. May he cause you to walk on an open heaven. May he open doors of opportunity for you that you can enter in and be victorious for God. May he continue to fill you with his love, grace, peace, the power of his spirit throughout this week and until he comes. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and everybody said, Amen. God bless you. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made.